I am seeing a lot of questions about weight, uh, about fiber, about weight gain um, around sort of- The midsection. Yeah. yeah. So let's yeah. do a little dive into that. So when we talk about um, belly fat, right? Everybody knows that term and knows what I mean. And um, belly fat is in medicine, we refer to it as visceral or intra-abdominal fat. So viscera is Latin for like organs. So it's the fat inside of our abdomen wrapping around our organs, around the liver, around the stomach, around the intestines, the omentum becomes thick, you know? And so that fat is very different than regular fat, than subcutaneous fat. Okay, subcutaneous fat, response to calories. It is our curves. You know, women cosmetically, I was taught that it was nasty and bad and a sign of poor willpower and just being a horrible person. And um, it's actually just the way God made us most of the time. And, you know, we should embrace our, our body diversity. Intra-abdominal fat, something totally different. This fat is typically driven by inflammation, by higher insulin levels, by diabetes. And you can look like me, have a thin outside right. and have a tremendous amount of visceral fat. And you have just as much cardiometabolic risk as what you consider to be obese. And which is not a term. It's now my daughter's in medical school and they call it ABCD adipose-based chronic disease. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. They're getting rid of the term obesity. And, you know, so people who have intra-abdominal fat, regardless of their weight, regardless of their size, are higher risk for hypertension, diabetes, and stroke. So what do we know? What has the studies told us in menopausal women that helped? Women on HRT, starting early, tend to have less visceral fat than women who do not. Okay. Again, not FDA approved, no medical society is recommending it yet for <laughs> the prevention of cardiometabolic disease. Right. That would be my hope in the future. Yeah. The studies are very clear um, that it, it is protective. So, but nutrition is your friend here. So women who have diets high in fiber, the average woman is getting about 10 grams of fiber in their diet per day. Women who get 25 or more and the like, the cognitive benefits seem to max out around 32 to 35 for most women on average. So we need more fiber in our diets. And the foods rich in fiber are always your default. So beans, legumes, berries, seeds, nuts, you know, things, vegetables that crunch are right. going to have your higher levels of fiber. I eat an avocado a day in general. Um, mm -hmm. I love them. Thank God. Some people can't stand them. But for me, it's like, I can get a third of my fiber if I just eat that avocado yeah. every yeah, day. Yeah. Um, now, full disclosure, I do sell some nutritional supplements. Fiber is one of them, but that should not be your main source of fiber. It really should come from food because these foods rich in fiber are rich in a whole lot of other things that are super healthy too and decrease yeah. your risk of chronic disease. So, you know, anthocyanins and vitamins and minerals and nutrients, you know, so foods rich in fiber are like a powerhouse and are your friend. So that's, that's one thing. And Rachel, I have lost my train of thought. Where did we oh. even start on this? You had a question <laughs> okay. about fat? No, you, you oh, answered fat. Okay, what else can you do? Yeah, Watching yeah. <laughs> added sugars. So sugars, you know, sugar is not, it's sugar is sugar. However, sugar is made by God in foods, you know, not by, by Nestle, or I'm not trying to pick on one, you know, processed sugars, foods right. added in cooking right. and processing refined, right. yep. are not your friend, refined okay. sugars. So because the foods rich in natural sugar, like an apple, are also rich in fiber, are also rich in, you know, and things that are rich in fiber will slow down the absorption of that sugar. So your insulin levels don't bump as high. So, you know, dates don't raise your blood sugar that much. And they're packed with natural sugars. So because they're also rich in fiber. So, you know, when you limit the added sugars in cooking, processing, and alcohol to less than 25 grams a day, women tend to have lower visceral fat levels and lower risk of cardiometabolic disease. Exercise, any type. I'm so sick of seeing all these exercise physiologists battling out amongst their things about hit or this or that. You right, should do it. Right, Look, right. I'm not here to get a, an athlete 1% healthier. That is not my job. My job is to meet a woman where she is. And listen, yeah. if she's on the couch, we got to get her walking. If she's walking, she should put on a weight of vest. If she's doing that, then we need to add in some weight training. Okay, you should be throwing in, for, you know, the, the, the nutritionists that I like to follow are like 150 minutes a week of your cardio is what you need. You should throw some sprints in there too. You know, do something that's going to get your heart rate up for a few minutes, a couple of times a day. You don't have to do a lot. You should have some, some kind of hit in there, but most of your training should be eh, somewhere in, in zone two, you know. 
Um, and you should be doing some kind of resistance training two to three days a week. But to tell a woman who has no resources, nothing, you know, who can barely function in her life, who's absolutely, you know, that you need to be going to the gym three days a week. You need to hire a trainer. You need to be doing it. You need to get a wedding dress. We got to meet these people where they are.